This video is about the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which describes the relationship of allele and genotype frequencies in populations. When the population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, the genotype frequencies can be predicted from the constituent allele frequencies, but also the other way around. Suppose for now that there are three alleles, although this method would also work for more or fewer of them. If the alleles are P, Q and R, let's use the lowercase letters for the corresponding frequencies. These frequencies must add up to 1, 100%, or in other words, P plus Q plus R is equal to 1. Also, due to random mating, because you get one allele from your mother and one from your father, it has to be true that P plus Q plus R squared must equal to 1, or 100%. There are two ways to derive the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium for three alleles, and we will show you both of them, the Punnett square method and the expansion method. For the Punnett square method, we should write the maternal and paternal alleles in a square like this, and use it to find the possible genotypes for the offspring. For example, in the top corner we get a PP, and then PQ, PR, uh, here we get a QP, which is really the same as a PQ, so normally we would write it in alphabetical order. And similarly, we fill out all the other genotypes. Now we can convert these to corresponding frequencies. So we get P squared, we get PQ in two different places, uh, and so on, we fill out this, this table. All these frequencies must add up to 1, or 100%. So we look at this table and try to collect like terms. So we have 2 times PQ, for example, 2 times PR, and so on, going through this table. And this is the total Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium for three alleles. Another method will be to use the expansion method. So we know that P plus Q plus R squared is equal to 1. So we can just expand this bracket. So it means that we have two copies of P plus Q plus R, and each of the terms in the first bracket will be multiplied by the entire second bracket. So P times the entire bracket plus Q times this entire bracket plus R times this entire bracket. Now each of these we can also expand the brackets. So we get P squared, PQ, PR, and so on similarly for the other two brackets as well. Now collecting like terms, we get P squared. We have two copies of PQ and so on for the rest of them. Notice that this is the same final answer as we got with the Punnett square method. Here's an example. Suppose that in country X, 41% of the population has blood type A, and 6% has blood type AB. Find the proportions of the population with blood types B and O, respectively. So there are three alleles that produce the ABO blood types, IA, IB, and little i. Let's use this lowercase letters P, Q, and R to denote the corresponding allele frequencies. The first step would be to write the given information in the question in terms of P, Q, and R. Then we would like to find the values for these frequencies, and finally use these values to find the frequencies of the blood types B and O. If a person has blood type A, this means they could be either homozygous for A, or they could have genotype IA little i, because little i is a recessive. But to have a blood type AB, this means you must have genotype IA IB. Now let's see what this means in terms of PQ and R. Remember that IA corresponds to P, so IA IA becomes P squared, and so on for the rest of, of this table. Blood type A could be P squared, or it could be PR, and we have two copies of that, so 2 times PR. This was supposed to be equal to 41%, or in other words, 0.41. Blood type AB can be given by PQ, and we have two copies of that, so 2 PQ, and this was supposed to be equal to 6%. Now we want to use this to find PQ and R. Here's the information that we have so far. We also know that P, Q, and R have to add up to 1. So for example, we can replace R by 1 minus P minus Q in the first equation. Now let's expand these brackets and simplify. Also using the second equation, we see that 2 times P, Q is equal to 0 0.06. And all of this is supposed to be equal to 0 0.41 from the first equation. Now let's rearrange this last step and bring everything to one side so that we can use the quadratic formula. This will give us two values, although one of them is not valid because the frequency cannot be larger than 
now that we have the value of p, we can use the second equation to find the value of q. Now that we have both p and q, remember that r is equal to 1 minus p minus q, and so we can use this and find the value for r. Step 3. Now that we have the values of p, q, and r, we can use these to find the frequencies of the blood types b and o. First, let's write down the possible genotypes that would result in a blood type b, and similarly for o. There are two different ways of getting blood type b, but only one way that would result in type o. Looking again at the Punnett square for frequencies, we see that blood type b corresponds to q squared plus 2qr. Now that we know the values of p, q, and r, we can easily insert these and find the value 0 0.15. Similarly, for blood type O, which corresponds to r squared, which we can now compute to be 0 0.38. Here's a summary of the frequencies of the alleles and also the blood types, both the ones that were given in the question and the ones that we computed. Notice that in each of these tables, the different frequencies add up to 1, or 100% and this should always be the case. The Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium can also be used with two or four or five, even more alleles. Suppose that we have P, Q, R, and S with the corresponding frequencies lowercase P, Q, R, and S. Why don't you give this a try and see which one of these options is the correct Hardy-Weinberg equi equilibrium for four alleles. Remember that you can use either the Punnett square method or the expansion method.